Welcome um, everybody back here on Siegel Talks uh, at the Markley Siegel Theater Center at the Graduate Center CUNY City University in Midtown uh, Manhattan. And uh, we are restarting our uh, series of uh, talks on the theater and performance uh, during the time of Corona. Um, from March on, uh, we had oh, 90 sessions uh, with 150 artists from almost 50 countries focusing on how artists think, uh, how do they work, what is in their mind uh, during this unprecedented time we are all um, experiencing uh, right now and after a break. Uh, now we are back focusing uh, still, of course, on the ongoing catastrophe that crisis or reality is uh, far stranger than any fiction movie we have seen and uh, where we know there's a good ending on a Netflix series at the moment. We don't know if there's still um, uncertainty. So we are looking at uh, ways, new ways uh, that uh, uh, will express what has changed. Things have changed already and um, theater and performance will be different and um, we are trying to evaluate the moment. Nobody knows really what will happen about I think while discussing, while talking, while listening, um, perhaps it will help to see what uh, is um, emerging. Uh, yesterday we had the great theater historian Marvin Carlson with us as a start. Uh, Marvin did point out that in the history of theater, the moment we are going through is unparalleled. Even in the time of the plague in London of Shakespeare's time, uh, theater companies could go to the countryside, to the castles. Th theater would happen. Also, it was never on such a global scale. So what we are experiencing now is something uh, completely new. And we are deeply, deeply affected by this and uh, everybody, but especially theater artists who now uh, in most countries still cannot go out, cannot work, or if they do it's a low capacity uh, um, um, uh, seating in uh, productions here in America, everything is still closed. I think the Met, the opera just announced today, they're gonna to be closed for another year. I think artists still haven't been paid. Um, there's no theater open. The restaurants still are not open. They will open, I think, next week with 15, 25% capacity. It's a disaster. It's a very big disaster for theater artists here in the US who have not supported in a way. They are still supported in Europe or perhaps in other places. Um, and they will, or as a matter of fact, in, in Canada. Um, not only Corona, the time of Corona is uh, threatening and uh, endangering what we do, um, of course, also political uh, uh, circumstances, situations, climates, as we know so well here in the US, um, are uh, changing what we thought perhaps is a, something we can always count on, the access to the arts, free access to the arts, as we have access to healthcare, access to education, and um, very, very uh, uh, dramatically, actually, uh, concerning messages are coming out of uh, Budapest in Hungary, a great, great country of theater. It was a great, great history. We use the Ferenc Molnars and everything is a, a great tradition. We also film and theater has always worked uh, hand um, in hand. And um, at the moment, uh, that's significant and, uh, and the big school, uh, the University of Theater and Film in Budapest is going or is forced to go to changes and there's a big resistance from student body, but also from, um, from faculty. So we're gonna hear now what our colleagues uh, are going through, our friends and uh, artists uh, in that time of Corona, that difficult time of very high numbers actually also in Hungary has been denied for a long time that it was actually a problem. But um, additionally, um, there's a devastating, I think, uh, situation, and we're going to hear more. We have three uh, representatives from the school with us. Uh, there's uh, Andras Forgash. Andras, welcome uh, with us. He's a professor at the theater, University of Theater and Film in Budapest, an author, playwright, essayist, uh, illustrator, and scriptwriter. He published also novels and um, um, been translated in uh, 19 languages. He uh, is also someone who adapts uh, classical work uh, from literature, Flaubert, uh, Hansom, uh, and, uh, and uh, Dostoevsky, and many, many um, other uh, works. He also, of course, writes original plays, a work of his own, and he uh, uh, worked uh, on uh, plays from Kleist, Beaumarchais, Genet, Wedekind, Horvath, Malo, Pinter, in translations, and the great Peter Nadas, the great, great Hungarian writer, spoke. Uh, parallel uh, stories, I think uh, it, it is so. He also put 
um, onto the stage. A representative from the students is with us. This is Hannah Milovitz, and she uh, is uh, there in the bachelor program, and she's interested in applied theater, theater in education and drama pedagogy with focus on community arts in theater. That's what so many uh, of the theater artists talked about actually in the Siegel Talks, the focus of community and how to you know, really reconnect to what perhaps has uh, lost. She's an intern at the Kava Drama Theater Education Association and also studied acting. And then um, with us is uh, the director or rector of the school at the moment, the great Laszlo Upor. He's a Hungarian dramaturg, literary translator, essayist, and a teacher everybody in Hungary knows him and everybody in European theater knows him. He's a great communicator and a great example of uh, Hungarian work. He has uh, uh, translated uh, novels, non-fictions and over 50 uh, stage plays. Uh, he has published book on theater film and also contemporary circus, which is a very significant part. And we also had circus artists here in our talk. So he is the rector since 2000. Um, 19 and um, he has really worked also with everybody as Andras did, you know, in uh, Hungarian theater. So welcome um, all of you. Thank you. So uh, what time is it now in Budapest and where are you in Buda or in Pest? I am in a little village not far from the town. So about uh, 40 kilometers from Budapest uh -huh. uh, in my quarantine as they used to say. So I I very rarely move in the town. Only when I have to defend the University of Laszlo and Hanna. I was once a guard there. Uh, there is this honorary thing standing before the building on the mm -hmm. on a kind of balcony. So I'm in a little village. I don't know Laszlo is in Pest, I think. Used to be in yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in Pest, which is the flat side of, of the two sides of the Pest. Hanna? I'm in Pest. I'm, I'm at home. So, um, Laszlo, um, um, we hear news, um, um, uh, uh, many, um, let us say, Philip Arno, uh, David Gotthard, uh, and other news we get from Hungary. Um, uh, it is uh, really, really, I think, uh, uh, a moment of deep crisis and deep concern. What's going on? Give us a little bit of insight. What are you doing there and what is happening? What has well, happened? Well, I, I try and, and be brief and I hope it will not be very uh, very boring. So obviously uh, before the background of this global catastrophe, the virus, our problem is insignificant. But for us, Hungarian artists, theater and film and media artists, it really is very, very sad. Our school, uh, the, um, the University of Theater and Film Arts Budapest is probably the smallest universities in Budapest, but we made big waves. And we'll talk about that, that those waves later. We are now in week four of, of a sit-in initiated by the students. On the last day of, uh, of uh, August, the leaders of this university stood up and left their positions. They all resigned. And I, as the, the academic leader of the school, the, the members of the Senate, or the heads of the departments, we all uh, resigned from our positions with one month uh, of leave. Uh, that means in six days, we will officially be left. Uh, that same night, uh, the night when, when we resigned, the students decided after a, a big street feast that they would occupy the building and never leave and would never let strangers, in other words, people who, whom they don't want to let in, they would not let those people in. Now, what, what, why did you resign? Why did you resign? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, uh, I, I try to make this long story short, but basically, some universities in Hungary are forced to go through a transition from state-run universities to so-called private universities. Private universities controlled by, uh, by foundations and, and uh, boards of trustees. And there is nothing wrong with that in principle, but the way it is in Hungary, it's more like private, privatization of universities by the present government. 
because the, the board of trustees uh, is made of members who are appointed for life and normally people who are very close to the present government or the prime minister himself. That is one problem. Uh, the other problem is that the, the law that was implemented would let a very, very uh, wide range of possibilities open uh, as for the, the sharing of, uh, of uh, responsibilities and powers between the Senate, that is the parliament of the university, and, uh, and the, uh, the, the board of trustees on the other hand. Very briefly, what happened was in, in the deed of uh, foundation of the university, the new deed of foundation of the university and the operational regulation, the new uh, board of trustees made very clear that they want to grab all the rights of the Senate uh, and keep it for themselves. In other words, the autonomy, the academic freedom that belongs to the university, that is a long tradition, not only in Europe, but all over the world, the university autonomy is, is fatally wounded. And that was the point when it became clear the end of August, that was the point when the leadership decided we don't take part in this. We don't want to be part of that chain of power that would regulate the school via this, this board of trustees. So if, I, I hope this is clear. I don't want to go into details because if my- If I understand right, could one say, let's say in a American, our university, the Republican party, for example, Trump would say, uh, uh, it's going to be privatized now, the city university, and I will put party members who I appoint for a lifetime uh, in charge. They might not even have been in the university business, and the Senate or a council of universities will be uh, shut down. It's actually a, a political party will be in charge of national uh, educational institutions. That's yes, right. And you must know, also, I, I, excuse me, I just, sure. you must know that this is a part of a long, long process that began 10 years ago when they <clears throat> are uh, started to start their program, their culture of the destruction program. And now, two years ago, the Central European University was forced to leave Hungary. You may have followed yeah. this. Yes. Uh, Soros is the, the common Soros. denominator of all demoniac uh, enemies, so they have something common with Trump. And also now the, the Academy of Sciences is uh, under the heel of the government. So this is just part of a, a very, very strong push. I just want to say it's not only with the universities, it's a very consequential thing that they are doing since they are second time in power, the Fidesz government. Mm -hmm. Hanna, how, how, you are a student, um, so um, you are the fourth week in strike or sitting, uh, um, 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 so tell us a little bit. <laughs> well, uh, first on, on Sunday night when we made this uh, street carnival, uh, which Laszlo talked about, when we, we went inside the building on the evening and we occupied the, the university, it was a very, it was a very big day because uh, that was the day when the Senate uh, said that they could resign, that they quit. And that was this carnival, with, which was very uplifting and a lot of people came and a lot of supporters came and there was also music and uh, uh, dresses and uh, speeches so it was very very good and after that there was a storm which came and we went inside the building and we didn't come uh, out <laughs> so there was a big countdown on midnight when we said that at the end of the countdown then we occupied the university i'm very curious hana because i'm i although i teach for 10 years now at the university was this a spontaneous thing or did you think about it? Because this is a big discussion that this is made by hidden forces. What the students did was manipulated by Laszlo, by Osher, whoever. Was this a spontaneous thing or you just, uh, you had a, a plan, a master plan how to do the things? I'm but curious. It, it, def it. 
<laughs> it definitely wasn't pushed by the teachers or the leaders of the university. Uh, this whole model change proce process started in uh, the spring. And in the whole summer, we made demonstrations and we made forums uh, between the students and we think about how could we represent ourselves and how could we protect our, our university, the autonomy of our university. So, of course, we, we thought about uh, occupying the university too, but it wasn't a decision. So it was spontaneous, but also we spoke about that opportunity too. Mm -hmm. So students are sleeping, they're staying overnight, or they go in and out of the day. How is that, how, at the moment, how is that, how, do, how does that look like? Well, it's a little um, special because in our, this main building, there's also the, the dorms. So there are also the dorms. So people, students live there too, <laughs> but uh, that we also, uh, brought their tents so people who are not living in the dorms also sometimes sleep inside the building yeah and, and that is my main worry in time yeah. in, in the times of virus so like a like yes. a good good and bad mother uh, i i keep warning them that uh, we shouldn't play with fire and of course they are very aware of this and they they we have a very strict COVID protocol, strict regulations. Which we, yeah, which we made, and we also consulted with doctors and also with the leaders of the university. So we are very focusing on that. That's not. Oh, but in the big picture, students put their life at risk to fight for a, a freedom of an academic freedom that has been there. I don't know, how long was the university in existence? At the, how long did it exist in the current? 155 years. Yeah. 155 years. It's a big, big tradition that they are breaking now. This number is, uh, and this, this, this institution really represents all these 155 years, what they want to destroy now. What I want to add to Hanna's uh, thing is that um, now you can read on the, <clears throat> on Facebook and at other places that there are menacing groups now that want to attack the students physically. They want to occupy it. Uh, some, some free, free groups of the government, some, uh, some youngsters. So it's a very aggressive environment. When you are there in the street, it's a little street, Washutsa. It's a very happy feast. It's a wonderful place. A lot of conversations, very intelligent, uh, very good conferences, teachers and students and everybody. A little bit outside, a little bit back, stepping back. Yes, let's see. I'll finish now. Is is the the page, the the picture changes? So there there are many many dangers now, uh, uh, not only ideological but physical dangers. Yes, let's see, please. Sorry. No, I didn't want to interrupt. I, I just wanted to sign that at some point I would say that yes, there are threats, but uh, they are very you know sparse. And stupid, I, I, I suppose they are, you know, skysers, not, not real, real uh, threats. But on the other hand, an extremely huge wave of solidarity is pouring from everyone, from everywhere in our society. And we must know that, that uh, the Hungarian society in general became very skeptical, doesn't really respond uh, to challenges, doesn't really raise solidarity and somehow it has changed over the last four weeks or over the last four months actually because the the actions the protests the demonstrations began early spring and of course the peak is the, the sitting so uh, the hungarian society seems to uh, to open their eyes and react eventually finally and also the international community. I mean, hundreds and thousands of, of supporting letters and offerings from universities and institutions from outside. Anna. Yeah, I also wanted to add that uh, you said that we are putting uh, our lives on risk. I wouldn't say that. 
it sounds very heroic, but uh, I wouldn't like put, I wouldn't like to think about that. No, no, no we, we put on risk our education and we put on risk our free time and we do it's, it's a enormous big work to do that to keep up the occupation but uh, i don't feel my life in danger and nobody does i think and uh, to the university so a lot of people who came to us are supporters so the sometimes there are people who want to uh, cause trouble or threat us, but they don't really um, very dangerous or aggressive yet. Well, uh, what I what I meant, sorry, uh, uh, that the communication in the governmental media is very very hostile, very yeah. very aggressive, uh, mendacious, etc. And it and Budapest is an opposition town. So if you have a lot of people coming there with food, also I brought there some food, which my wife cooked for them, uh, is, is, is a sign that Budapest is an opposition city. But the country itself, a lot of people <clears throat> are not interested in this conflict in my little village, which is not a, a, a far away. And a lot of people eat the propaganda of the government. I just want to say this. So I'm very happy that a lot, I saw, I saw with my own eyes how people spontaneously go there and help the students and talk there. And this is a wonderful event. It's a historical event as Laszlo beautifully phrased in his uh, departing or opening speech. I don't know because he gives the, now these speeches that it's a historical moment and it is. But, but the, the situation is very precarious because this is a strong government with a very strong popular support. And we must know that. So that, let's not speak about all Hungarians are supporting or many. Most of the Hungarians are not interested. I mean, in the country, not in Budapest. And, and the government is very, very strong in their will uh, to, to, to do their program, which he already 20 years ago declared in his usual uh, yearly speeches, which he holds. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah, what I'm going to say is, and I hope I don't repeat myself, is compared to the, to the uh, usual darkness or, or uh, you know, uninterestedness in, in, in public matters, this time we, we experienced something that we haven't over the last several years, even in case of much bigger institutions like uh, the Central European University or even the, the Academy of Sciences. They are much, much more important than our school. But for some reason, uh, the actions of our school, uh, the way the students act, and of course, the way the, the teaching staff act, raised empathy and sympathy we have not experienced before. And what we, we failed to mention so far, the, the students organize wonderful, wonderful public events that are extremely popular, and I hope uh, Hanna will tell you about those uh, events and actions too. I didn't want to talk about that, but I can talk about that later too. But I wanted to say um, to what you said that uh, it's a very, it means a very a lot to us. And I think it's a very big uh, achievement that uh, on Tuesday, we went uh, to the countryside to other Hungarian universities to meet with other students from other universities. And we made forums and they they started to organize themselves to some themselves to uh, support us on the one hand one side and the other side they want to find pro uh, solutions for for their problems. Too. So they they also started uh, mm -hmm. uh, actions, yeah. You know, or just speak about what uh, the problems are or the good things on their university. I must add that the students are magnificent. You know, they have uh, press conferences which last three minutes. You know, and in three minutes they can say everything, and they they beautifully designed the whole building, which became a symbol in Hungary, an art symbol, etc., with these stripes red and white stripes. It's marvelous what they are doing. The whole picture is darker, of course, but uh, it's a wonderful thing to observe as a sympathizer. Mm -hmm. but, there is, but there is, I must add as a realist, 
Hungarian writer, there is a lot of indifference also. Mm. The incredible flowing of the international support is, is really, I never experienced this till now, but we know the limits of it. Mm. We know the limits of it in authoritarian systems. Yeah. Tell us a bit about the school, if, if I'm right. I mean, even I, when I was a student, uh, the, especially the film school, but also the theater school in Budapest, it was regarded of the highest level. There's Baconsfield in London um, and the Berlin Film Academy, um, but the Budapest school for, um, especially when it came to craft uh, in film, um, this is where people went, the camera, people, others, but also for directing a great student sort of. So tell us a bit, and also in theater, you know, I think every, most probably every significant director or designer people came through that school. Tell us what is the philosophy of the school that uh, that you that for so long operated. What were your, what are your, what are your visions, your ideals? How did you teach theater, and film? Well, I, I think um, part of our tradition is change. Uh, I mean, uh, we've been with this tradition, but but uh, the constant change is also part of the tradition. And I know it sounds very general, mm -hmm. but. Uh, it goes from generation to generation, and we uh, we we keep uh, including the new talents in the teaching staff. So you know, teachers would, uh, I mean, uh, students would become teachers and then professors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's not a philosophy. That's just a part of this tradition. But what may be interesting for American and international audiences. The, uh, the education is very much practice-based. Uh, there is very little academia, academic, uh, uh, academic studies are, are just a very, very tiny uh, uh, portion of what we do. Uh, the, the majority, 90% of the teachers are uh, people from the profession, the, 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 the highest level, uh, theater people and film people and television media people teach at the university. And uh, our practice is the, uh, the ground and the top of our education. Everything is derives from practice of theater, film and media and everything is fed back to, to, to practice. Um, we have very, very small groups of students, five, six to uh, 15 people in a group, we call them classes, just like in, in, in little schools. And, and the master, one or two or three masters, would go with this class for the whole duration of, of the studies. And of course, she or he would in, invite other, other professors, other teachers, uh, and she or he would pick, I mean, hand pick the other uh, teachers and decide most of the curricula, but, uh, but it's, it's basically the must, master discipline, uh, uh, disciple, uh, relationship, yeah. 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 the master disciple relationship, which is the basis for the whole education. So the students also merge. So students of one, uh, one field would work together with, with students of, of the other field. And from day one, they would work on film and theater productions. And the, you know, most of the exams are either preparations for exams or, exam, or, or, or productions uh, themselves. I don't know if, if, it, if it gives you a clear picture. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very familiar, very close-knit, very close-knit community, very familiar relationships, uh, fatherly, brotherly relationships. It's a very um, intimate, community, you know, with, with great artists as teachers, but who are also there physically, you know, I had students, my students now, which I was teaching last time in the film school, they got their diplomas now this year. So I finished now, in fact, teaching at the university as a class master, whatever you call it. And they are calling me like uh, I would be their father, you know, it's, it's all finished. They come to, to consult me now. It's a very intimate, very intense relationship with your students. And it's also part of the big tradition, you know, and this is now what's happening now is trying to destroy this very sensitive fabric of relationships. 
And I'm, I'm a little bit afraid that they will succeed even if they don't succeed, so mm. to speak. Yeah, yeah. You know, when, when, you, when, you, when you get a, a, a message on Messenger at three in the morning, hey, prof, we've been listening to the music you showed us the other day during class, and we've been listening to it three times this morning. And, and that message would you know, come to your phone at three in the morning. Mm, that kind yeah, of very, very typical. Yeah. It's hard to imagine how appointees of a political party would even be able uh, to create uh, such an identity, such a, such a um, um, passion also, you know, for, for, for a craft and also have the know-how. Hannah, for you, why did you go to this school in, in, instead of something else? And what, what are you afraid? What will change if the plans go through? Mm, I I so I went to the school because I wanted to um, work in the field of theater. Uh, first, I thought I I would be an actor, but uh, then it came around that it's not the way for me. But I also wanted to uh, work with people, uh, or I I also thought about that I would be a teacher, but that wasn't a place for me to, neither so I, I I searched for for a place where I can mix uh, education and theater together and I heard one of my friends that uh, she's on this uh, bachelor program so I I uh, applied and that's why I'm here and I'm very happy because I very find my my, my place I think so I, I fear that I lost this. <laughs> so I, I have a very good uh, classmates. The, the field when I will work in, in Hungary, it's very new and inspiring and the people are very open. Uh, and my, my teachers are like uh, also like partners for me. So I, I I love this uh, relationship, like we were colleagues from the first, from the beginning. So in, in my faculty, the, relations, the relation, relationship between teachers and students aren't like that what Andres and Lasso told, that this parent relation, but the, the partner and the colleague relation, yes. No, I, I did mean that I am a, a, a father figure, but they use us also as, you know, yeah. there was a big I discussion on the, in the right, in the press of the government. Uh, uh, they said the children, the children should listen because Hungary, Hogoto means the listener, the student, the word for student in Hungarian is listener, Hogoto. So they said they should be silent and listen. This is what the government spokespeople said. And of course, uh, we, uh, we, I with my students, we are friends, of course, but uh, the, the father thing is when they come to ask advice, to seek advice about life problems, not about professional problems. But it, to get into this school, you must know, it's a big prestige in Hungary to get into this school. There is, I don't know, Lotsi will know how many times more people want to get in that they can, that they can take. How many, what's the number, Lotsi? Well, it's, uh, the average is 50, 50 plus times. So uh, one in every 50 or 60 or 80 applicants would get in school, depending on, on what, uh, what profession. I mean, uh, actors, directors, uh, 80 times more applicants than what we could uh, admit. It's a hugely, hugely popular institution in Hungary. Hanna? I forgot to say the, the main thing, which I, I fear of losing, uh, is that uh, I think in our university, uh, everyone is, uh, so the teachers are inter interested in the students uh, about who they really are, what do they want, what do they see the world, uh, and then everybody is, is uh, constantly uh, asking questions about the world and not not say uh, mm, 
you know, you, people don't say that the Hungarian people like that or the words like that, black and white, but we always ask questions and always search for truth and always, yeah, yeah. But, but isn't you know, that the, this big, big word around us? And I fear that with this um, new um, uh, system, people would want to tell me what I have to think. But isn't that ask normal? what I think. Isn't that normal? Isn't that the basic thing of you know education that you ask questions instead of giving statements? Yeah. I mean that's that's normal. What, what's very, what I want to add also to the whole situation, it came out uh, through the analysis of lawyers and legal people that the government is moving, or this committee, or I don't know, curatorium, what they call it, is moving on a totally unlawful territory. They don't know what they are doing. They are such in, a, in such a hurry that they are doing things which are not lawful at all. It's not in the original law, which they accepted in the parliament. They were so eager to occupy this university. Laszlo can give you more details about this, but I read, I read all the stuff about it every day, of course, what they publish is that they are totally unlawful now in many things, what they are doing with the university. Isn't that true, Lotsi? Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm not sure we should go into details. It's actually very boring and depressing, but but, uh, but Andras is right. Now, as, as the day comes closer, when, when, the, when the leaders are gone, I mean, in a few days time, and they, they need to find a solution for this. And instead of, of going the rightful way, they decided to break the law, which is also very depressing, and we'll see what will happen. But I, I, I don't think we should, we should bore um, you with the details. Mm -hmm. so and I'm you, sure we can, we can tell you loads of very bad things about ourselves. Mm. So basically, there is uh, even the legal ground on which the, the government is uh, uh, taking these actions in the name of the government, like they are, um, they are not sound. They are not uh, approved, and it's not the role, um, in that sense, you know, of the of the government to privatize uh, art schools. It's a, it's a shocking development, and um, as Andra said, you know, news we heard uh, from Hungary, uh, festivals shut down, international festivals are just not given any more funding. Exchange of artistic leaders, um, of theaters, you know, uh, I think one politician even made a comment, we don't want those riffraff plays from New York anymore. We have enough Hungarian homeland uh, writers, you know. Um, um, there was the exchange of leaders of universities, uh, directors, as you also pointed out. So it's like a, a whole um, 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 a machinery working in, um, in uh, uh, cutting down discourses of flowers of different uh, different colors uh, on the Hungarian um, and fields. Um, what is interesting, and I, I agree what Lazo said, you know, the big institutions also have been thrown out in the great Soros Foundation, who we think is doing very good work. And of course, it's controversial. People have different opinions, but this is what they do. And it is a significant and also successful and is a great uh, representation of Hungary, of Hungarian uh, thinking in, in the world. Um, but uh, that um, theater seems to be uh, uh, getting the attention. Uh, we had in our Siegel talks a hung an Indian playwright, Abhishek Mumbar, who said, uh, I have a small theater company. I do small plays. And I wonder if you ask me if it's important what we do. Well, the government thinks so. They shut us down. They uh, censor our plays. He says, big movie theaters with perhaps much more critical themes. Nobody cares. TV shows with millions of viewers don't seem to have that effect, that deep connection. So um, I think it's a good sign that it does matter and that uh, some uh, part of Hungarian population seems to be understanding this is going too far. Something is, is wrong. And it is truly shocking that in a tradition of enlightenment of 150 years of openly teaching of the arts where you ask questions instead of giving answers, you know, that actually all great art should give not answer, they chose to ask better questions. Um, but tell us a bit, who came out of this school? Tell us a little bit uh, of, of the success stories or how, who, who um, 
we hear a lot of the Hungarian filmmakers, the documentary makers, the long, long hour films that are so admired. And um, but is there a style that you have created at that school? Well, just uh, I think you should you should uh, remind our listeners to a few names like uh, the the great cinematographers Vilma uh, Zsigmond and László Kovács uh, yeah. graduated at our school a long time ago, but also uh, Ildiko Enyedi, whose yeah. work uh, won a lot of um, prizes and attention, and then Geza Rörig, who, who played the, the lead in, in uh, Charles' uh, song, etc. Uh, for the theatre artists, you wouldn't know loads of names, but maybe uh, even people here would know Tomasz Osher's name, who, who directed several plays that uh, traveled the world. Um, as I said, and, and, and of course, the young, younger people too, but you may not know them, so there's no point in naming them. But uh, there was a long tradition of the Stanislavski-based uh, acting uh, method, and it has slowly changed and gradually changed. Um, so one 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 basis of of the uh, of the uh, acting act, actors training is the Stanislavski method, but also the musical and physical training is very very important. And over the last several years, we started new we 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 tread on 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 new fields as uh, physical theater, uh, the, the, the puppetry is, is fairly new in our school, of course, not in our art, not in our theater, in the school, it's 15, 20 years, physical theater training, which is very, very, very strong and very, uh, very successful, goes only back 10 years. Um, we also uh, ex experimented with, uh, with making up new curricula for uh, for combined studies, like parallel classes would have the same basis uh, education, but uh, from from day one they would work together on produ uh, productions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think all in all, there is no general style. Uh, it all depends on the artists who are invited to teach. Uh, the, the theater style is still much closer to the realistic Stanislavski based, et cetera, et cetera, but not, not, so, uh, not so exclusively as, as before, especially the, the younger generation of the 40s and 30s. Now they, they, uh, they do other styles. And as, as for the film, it, uh, the Hungarian school, I suppose, was, has always been in the forefront in, there was one, uh, it was one of the flagships of, 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 of cinema education. So um, I'm actually quite proud of the school. And, and I know it sounds very cheesy. And you know, what else should this man say? But I really mean it, um, uh, especially because the infrastructure of the school is very, very poor. And uh, the school is very uh, much under finance. The, the international uh, success of our our students are, is, is, is really fascinating. Just one example, the, uh, every single year there's a student Oscar uh, competition and the only school in, in, in the world, and I, I repeat, the only school that had films nominated for student Oscar three years in a row is our school. And in, in one of the three years, the student uh, also won, won the prize. So that is not just uh, uh, our pride, but it also shows that there are really, uh, I mean, you know. Yeah. No, this school, uh, this school is for real. Um, there is, uh, there are great schools also in America, but as some say, perhaps also on every campus, all of a the sudden the theater department came up or a film department. This school that you are leading is an exceptional jewel, I think, uh, 
in experimenting with arts education and also in the field of practice to have real results and also your students your work in the field afterwards and also as a sign of uh, uh, acknowledgement and respect they come back and teach it's a living organism i think i once was and visited the school uh, also when i was um, I'm still um, a student and later on i was uh, highly highly impressed even as you point out it was it seemed always underfunded compared to other institutions in Western Europe who had, I would say, are much more um, available. Here is a question. Can I, can I say just one thing? Yeah. In Bucharest, the film school is much better funded than in Hungary. So yeah. it's, it's also, it was also a governmental decision here to hunger it out. To, they started to underfinance it year after year. They squeezed the money out of this university. Yeah. So it's poorer than it could be normally. Yeah, something. Yeah country should be really proud of Hungary that has contributed so much to the history of modern art to modernity. And um, it's a great disappointment, I think, uh, for the world that uh, that tradition uh, seemed to be endangered um, after the opening of the wall, that uh, in the contrary, um, it uh, seems the clock seems to go backwards. Yes, let's go. Uh, but, but we must add, and I don't want to open a new topic, but I must add, that the the uh, the uh, the board that had, that was appointed, they claim and they promise that they would bring a lot of money. They would, uh, you know, build a wonderful infrastructure, and everything will be just wonderful and beautiful. But what what they actually say with other words at other moments is quite frightening. So they they promise to make everything shiny and. And, uh, and happy, but but it it is very much contradicted by their other statements because yeah. three three people on this board uh, have actually uh, behaved in a very very hostile way much much before they were appointed. So that is also uh, um, you know. No, no, but then their strategy, their strategy is this government strategy is, is to pour the money. They think that they can buy everything with money. They can buy talent with money. They can buy a uh, future with money. So I, I was visiting now a few days ago, MOME, that's the other university that went through the same process, but not in four months, but in seven years. So it's a big difference, you know, this privatization of the system. It's, it's a beautiful campus. But of course, if you read, if you go behind the surface, they have taken a lot of liberties and a lot of autonomy also there, but much more gradually. Here we saw that there is a frontal attack by one person who was hurt, who is frustrated, who wants revenge. And this was a frontal attack, very badly timed. Uh, in other spheres of literature, I'm a writer and uh, you know, they, they created a, uh, uh, a very sophisticated uh, scholarship, so to speak, named after a young writer who died with 50 years, Janos Terei, uh, which, they, which they very generously threw out to the writer's community without looking at their uh, worldviews, without uh, judging their, uh, all they are liberals or conservatives or nationalists. And it functioned quite well in, in, in a way it, it, they could sow division between the, so to speak, the, the liberal writers where I'm a member of. So they will, I'm sure that they will pour a lot of money into a wonderful campus, which will be dead. That's my very stark opinion, culturally, artistically. That, that will be a beautiful building, uh, half dead. Let's, let's be optimistic, not fully dead, because for my country, I hope that. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to add this. <clears throat> Hannah? Uh, I'm listening. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it is quite uh, uh, it, 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 it is stunning that in Europe, uh, in the times we live in, uh, that uh, this uh, these things do happen. I we do believe that arts are free, or they are not free. There's not a lot in between. There's freedom of research, freedom of the arts, freedom of opinion, freedom of speech, or there's not. And um, one Thank cannot you. have gradual gradual uh, uh, transitions, and it's like. As someone said, was pregnancy, or you are pregnant, or you're not. And the same is with the arts. Are they free? Can they do? And their job is to criticize. I remember the drama talk from the Volksbühne Berlin, Sebastian Kaiser, who said, we were the most radical left-wing theater. We did whatever we were. We attacked 
the city of Berlin, the politicians. But ultimately, we proved their point that art is free and that the city is working, you know. So he said, so ultimately, we proved, you know, the system and uh, that it worked, but it was a real uh, exchange, they felt, you know, they really fulfilled their mission to talk about immigration, to talk about the devastation um, that this neo-capitalism neo uh, brought into the city, the changing of neighborhoods, and also the loss of uh, utopian ideas, you know, that, that uh, happened when the wall uh, uh, opened and so many people who also walked on the streets who, who demonstrated uh, on the east side also for for a new vision that this was a felt that was ironed over. So, um, so in, if they would be smart, they would say, do whatever you want. You just show that we let you do, and we still do. So why, why that insecurity? Why are they so obsessed uh, to, to uh, rule and regulate a tiny film school um, in, the, in the heart uh, of uh, a central, uh, a central Europe. And um, I know you have big supporters. I think Salman Rushdie, Helen Mirren, Kate Blanchett, people uh, came out to bet for you who know the ex importance of education, of good education, of an open and free and also affordable education. How much is it for a student? And how much do you pay for a year to go to that university? We don't pay at all because in Hungary you have um, five years or no more six six years. Uh, the country, uh, the the states uh, pays your uh, education for for six, six maybe. years. But, but uh, sorry, sorry, I must. But add. if you yeah, if you are if you run out of these uh, years and some of the students have already a. Uh, um, Graduated, graduated in other universities, then they have to pay. And for a semester, it's, I don't know how many dollars is that. <laughs> I only know in foreign. <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe I can count it. A hundred. A lot of money. A lot of, it's, you have a to lot. pay a lot In of a Hungarian money. average, uh, yeah. it's, it's a lot. Yeah, still here in America in private universities, which often offer really also good education, but it's fifty, sixty thousand dollars one year, you know. And of course, you know, uh, private university, when they privatize, people will start to charge admissions. Things, uh, things do change. I would like to ask you guys the other way around. Um, if let's say the government would say, listen, we have that money. We want to have the new shiny buildings and invest in the equipment. What would you do? What would, let's say you would be asked to create that new thing as a student or so what would you do? What's your vision? What's, what do we need in that time of Corona where there's time to reflect and to think, what do you feel should be done? What would you guys do if you get big resources, the ones you don't have. We definitely need a new campus because the one we have right now, it's melting down and it's too small. <laughs> so <laughs> first I think we need a new campus. No, you, uh, the, it, it's a fact that this, this school with a long and good tradition uh, of 155 years have never had a campus as such. We, yeah, we, we have separate buildings. We have separate buildings and none of them was built uh, for educational purposes or theatrical or, you know, film purposes. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, one was a temple, the other was a brothel. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's very important. And the third was a private, was a private uh, villa for a very rich aristocratic family. These are the three buildings, different buildings, not far from each other, but you know, and, and, and you still have those little rooms in the brothel and you still have those temple-like features in the, in the main building where washuts are where the things happen now. Uh, you really must be in love with, uh, with the whole spirit of the school and in love with the education to, uh, to keep up the spirit because, it, you know, it really is kind of poor. Whenever we have visitors, uh, meetings or workshops, I always pray for them to leave uh, before they need to go to the loo. Mm. Because the facility, I mean, I'm joking, of course, but, uh, but the facilities, the, the whole infrastructure is very, but this is, this is not the time to, you know, 
Anyway, if, if we have the money, yes, we would build a, a campus. If we have enough money, we would hire all kinds of people who, who should uh, teach. But I don't think we would ever give up on our ideas of the academic freedom and the freedom of art. And I think this is, this is what's going on now, that there are promises, uh, everything will be wonderful if you give in. But people don't seem to want to give in. What, what they imagine now, these people, uh, that they, uh, some of their uh, actors and directors will teach the classes parallelly to the original teachers. But this is the case which Villon, Villon the, the great French uh, poet said, that the fly in the milk, you know, if a fly is in the milk, you can't drink the milk. It's a, it's a, now it's, it's the revenge of the mediocre, because what happened in this university is that they invited always the best people, the, the possible best people to teach. It took a long time. They invited also Attila Vignansky, the guy who is uh, the crusader to, to destroy this institution. They invited him and he, he participated not very fully, but he, he did also some little work there. He could have done it from the inside if he was really interested. What's very important here is that the best people should teach. They should, uh, we should, the, the university should keep this aspect, this intimacy, this friendship or master student relationship and always be open to the new things. And this is what happened under Usher and this is what happened under Lotzi and this is what happened under the, the rector who was before him, that he was always an open eye to invite a new face, a new idea. And in the last 15 years, we had a lot of new courses and a lot of new, new people coming in. It's an open institution with the best people. Um, sorry, just to, to uh, a serious answer to your question, Frank. If we have the, the money and the time, we would go through all the uh, discussions, debate, uh, negotiations you need before you, you go through a change, because no one, no one denies we need changes. And we would be extremely happy to have the time, maybe the money too, but the time uh, and the quiet uh, space to, to think through and negotiate and debate how this school should change. What we are robbed now is exactly the time and the, and, and the, and the space uh, there you could you, you could have a debate on all this because I'm sure those people, the people who impose the bill on us, they have wonderful ideas. They may have wonderful ideas, but by by throwing a hand grenade in before they enter the building, they stopped us from negotiating. They stopped us from from uh, from accepting their views, their ideas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In in an interview, I. I, I gave a stupid metaphor, but I, I, I'm sorry, I, I repeat this. There's a huge difference between lovemaking and rape. And what has been happening now is much closer to rape than lovemaking. Mm -hmm. Do you all feel that the time of Corona, that it happens now, is that a coincidence? Do you feel they move, they did this now because it might be easier? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's easier, but the, it's a program that they are doing consequentially. You must see that too. It's one step on a long road through the destruction of this, what we call democracy, Western democracy. Hungary is an authoritarian country today where the prime minister thinks that if a theater is playing Richard III, it's about him. It means that it's an authoritarian society. When mm. I was a young dramaturg and my theater wanted to play the, the Merchant of Venice, it was forbidden because the guy in the party thought it's about him. He's Shylock because he was a Jew. And now we are in the same situation, absolutely a very same situation. Coronavirus is a very good pretext everywhere, not only in Hungary, to do many things. We see the international press about this. Well, they I, are I, absolutely I, perfect in this manipulative use of a crisis situation. They know I, that. I think Corona came very handy, but I don't think that initiated anything. What is more important is that we will have elections in 2022 and whatever uh, 
radical changes this government want to get through with, they should very soon. They, they, they will definitely not uh, uh, initiate radical changes in the year before the elections. So I suppose- I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that, Lotsi. Sorry to discuss it. These people are radicals. They are absolutely not conservatives. They are very, very aggressive people. They have their will, willpower. I say plural, but it's one person. And he's not, doesn't take care into anything into consideration. Just think about the destruction of the, of the, of the, of the, this religious order uh, of which the leader is the guy who, who was the, who baptized the children of Orban. He totally destroyed it like in a Shakespeare play. He doesn't care about this. I, th I think it's over, over sophisticated thinking. I'm, I'm sorry to, to interrupt. You may be right, Andras, but I know yeah. that Hanna should go in a few minutes, so we should give uh, some room. Yeah. So, yeah. Hanna, what is what is the perspective of the students? Well, in two days, um, let's say that nothing will happen. Will will students go to courses? Will they do them under protest? What's your prediction? Will the sit-in go on indefinitely till next year? <laughs> um. We will keep on uh, fighting until our uh, until we couldn't uh, until we don't get what we want. So I, I can say that, but I can I can't really say in what will happen in a month because I have no idea and nobody does. In October there will be a big uh, change because uh, the leaders will. So the oh, last one, please help. So <laughs> they wouldn't stay here as leaders because well, we are... October the first, October the first, it will change. Yeah. We'll, be left, we'll, be left, we'll be left in less than a week. Hmm. I mean, officially and uh, finally. Yes, yes. and the, but so... there will be a time to to make another uh, so there will be another bigger conflict because someone has to be a leader and he or she will come from outside so there will be an interesting time <laughs> because we won't get them inside we we'll let them inside yeah hmm. how can students let's say we have listeners or campuses in New York or New Orleans or Los Angeles, they want to show solidarity, they go to your website, is there a place they can, uh, how can they find you guys? In English? Uh, I, I don't. On uh, Facebook, uh, we have uh, a Facebook page, which is uh, linked to uh, the student government. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we, we share there everything, sometimes in English too, but mostly uh, in English. English. So what's the Facebook address? Is there? I write in. <laughs> yes, yes. So in, the in the chat. Yeah, when you leave, we'll still have your, um, instead of your name, the, the address. So um, what's going to happen to you guys if you're out of the job? Is that, uh, are, are you then officially still part of faculty or? Are you being thrown out? What's the uh, what's what's the situation? What's it? Well, I uh, I decided, just like the majority of, of the leaders, that I would resign as a leader, but stay as uh, an educator, teacher, as long as it makes any sense as long as I don't have to give up on basic values, uh, because this is, this is, you know, this is my responsibility to go on teaching my students. I cannot take part in that power system, and I will not pretend that I will, will uh, uh, accept the, uh, the regulations that are imposed on us, but as for the teaching, I try and keep up my my friend my my freedom. Uh, if that is impossible, it, or if something even more horrendous is uh, imposed on the school, 
then of course I believe as a teacher as well. And I suppose most of my colleagues think the same way. But I must add that quite a few of our old professors that have been part of the tradition for 20, 30, 40 years, they decided to go once the, the list of the, uh, of, of the more board members was published. They decided they, they cannot collaborate with these people, people who, who were so hostile and so unjust to our uh, community of students and, and, and teachers. So, but in, in brief, I, I try and stay uh, as a teacher and we'll see. Um, I have to go now, I'm sorry. I wrote the Facebook address in the chat and if someone wants to get in touch with us, then there mm -hmm. they can write us in English too. Yeah. There's a group of people who deals with the international mm -hmm. press. Or maybe uh, put the address instead of your name, you know, as a name so we see it and leave your screen on if possible. I'm not sure if everybody can access the chat from the outside. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, Andras, what's with you? So, bye, bye, Hannah, and really thank you for taking the time. Uh, Where are you going? What are you doing? If we may ask. <laughs> to the doctor. <laughs> okay. Good luck with everything. Thank you. Uh, well, in my case, it's very different from Laszlo's. I was, I was ten years. Uh, I teach certain classes before, but in the last ten years, I had two classes themselves. One class was a theater class, the other class was a film script class. So five, five years, five plus five years. And I, I, I resigned from the job. They asked me two years ago if I want to continue or I want to be part, no, for private reasons. I don't like to be part of institutions. That's my, my personal problem. This is a wonderful institution. And my colleagues asked me, I have a wonderful colleague who is my uh, who's also a colleague of uh, Lotzi Gabor Nemeth, a wonderful Hungarian writer. He asked me, if, if I ask you to hold classes, will you come? He must define it very precisely what, what he wants from me, for me to go there. But it has nothing to do with politics in this case. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure certain, we, I use this metaphor, fly in the milk uh, of Mr. Willon. You know, when the fly is in the milk and in the next classroom, somebody teaches things that I totally disagree with, I don't think my words have the same meaning. So I have very good friends who teach on. I have very good class masters. Otilo Janisch, who is a fighter for this university, he's going on with his class. I'm sorry for them, in fact, if you ask my real opinion, if this happens, if the worst scenario happens. I think it's a, it's, it's, it's a very bad situation when in one classroom there is a nationalist conservative Christian teacher and in the other classroom there is a teacher whom they call liberal whatever. It's impossible. It doesn't work that way. And this never worked that way. Mm -hmm. they, they, they systematically, and of course, Lotzi is right in one respect that of course they are sometimes looking at the elections okay, some calculations, but they are systematically destroying the fabric of mm -hmm. cultural life as it is. What they call liberal, okay, that's, a, that's, a, that's just a word, you know. The cultural life as it is, it's, very, it's a very sophisticated texture and fabric. And they intentionally try to tear it apart with quite a lot of success. Mm. Sorry to give this pessimistic and dark scenario. No, I think uh, you are both right. Uh, it's right to stay. It is absolutely right to say and to stand up and the words as the, the liberal or whatever, the arts teacher will be more worthwhile, but it's also absolutely right to say, no, I can't. It reflects, you know, the multiplicity um, of opinions and, um, and but it's just, uh, it is uh, devastating to think that me, I'm also at the university or my colleagues would have to face such choices that a political party will put in, uh, people who control uh, arts education or in general education at universities it's no longer about credits about uh, about achievements and about excellence um, but it's about a connection in a party and an ideology and uh, as we all know ideology makes for bad theater ideology makes for bad films ideology makes for bad poems and for bad novels and if you teach the arts you cannot uh, uh, do the opposite of, of what it is all about. It's an incredible warning sign, and, but maybe and often, the theater is the first to close down, but often 
When uh, there is resistance, theater also is the first where it manifests. So it is important uh, uh, what you do. And uh, I think the world is uh, watching the New York Times, I think also dedicated an article uh, to you, which is very rare. Um, normally the New York Times doesn't write anything about education. It's the kiss of death. Whenever we try to get something, they say, listen, you write about universities, we could write all day about Columbia and uh, you and the, you guys. But so it is really um, the seriousness of this situation, I think, is acknowledged, uh, especially history of 150 years and with very dark times in between, actually. So this change is significant. And, um, and we hope um, that um, out of that uh, confusion, out of this crisis, um, something good will come up. But we don't know. It's part of that time of Corona, I think, that uncertainty. We really do not know. And it's unusual for us, especially in the Western world, not to know what is going to happen and what will be, but um, there's a serious uh, reason um, for concern. And we admire you all that you uh, take a stand and that you are in the middle of a fight that uh, for us somehow seems uh, far away and not imaginable, but perhaps it's around the corner. Also, we do not know, or perhaps it will be a warning sign and it won't be. But as you know, also in America also in other countries in, in Europe, you know, in Poland uh, and others, uh, uh, there are uh, forces at work, you know, that uh, 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 deny of that what worked, you know, is why. Yeah, I mean, I mean we, we, we invented Trump much before America did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Bad joke. But... What do you think? What is your prediction uh, for the Hungarian uh, society? Um, do you think uh, uh, this is a phase that a country like Hungary that has been suppressed uh, so long in the Iron Curtain, um, where I do remember uh, seeing uh, music groups, uh, did, did, uh, Hungarian music as a form of resistance, listening to Rolling Stones, but wearing Hungarian traditional clothes, you know, as a sign of resistance um, against uh, 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 the, also the censorship of suppression. But, uh, that perhaps Hungary says we need to experience a national a moment of ourselves, but do you think it will pass or do you think this is just the beginning of a very long time of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, That's what I think, yes. That's what I think, what you are laughing. We are at the beginning of a historical shift, a change. These are symptoms, these are signs. We have an ideal which is looking in the past, I mean, the, the so-called liberal democracy, which is, I put it in quotation marks, that's all, already a problem. And, and we don't see the new forms of society which are building up before our eyes. So you need new strategies, new ideas for new relationships. And I think this will go on now for quite a long time because they are quite, quite well stabilized through all kinds of international relationship between, you know, Trump called, called Orban a few days ago uh, and, and Bolsonaro calls Putin and Putin calls Erdogan, etc. This is, this, is this is a huge story and Hungary is very much part of it, even if Hungary is too small. So I, in this respect, I'm very pessimistic. On the other hand, this event around the school in Hungary, the theater and film school in Hungary is a wonderful thing. And we know that in history, sometimes a one week can mean more than 20 years or 50 years in its symbolical um, meaning. And it gives a very strong example and paradigm for the future. But if to, to answer concrete, I think this will go on now for a certain time. It's, we are not at the end of it now. They are very well uh, entrenched, so to speak, yeah. Uh, you know, um, I'm very frustrated and depressed and pessimistic and skeptical, whatever if you name it, um, out of the experience of the last many, many years. Because as you may remember, a few years ago, we discussed uh, that very shadowy image of, of Hungary being deeply, deeply divided as a society uh, in every little field. And that's the making of, of the people who are now governing this but it didn't start with them being in the government. It, it began many, many years ago, at least 20 years ago, when they decided that the, the best marketing tool of any kind of idea, the best marketing uh, tool of any economic 
or other ideas is to, to put everything in a very simple way and, uh, and boil down everything to yes and no question. And this is what's been happening. And this is how the, the, the whole society is divided uh, into people who would say yes to this question and people who would say no to that question. And yes and no questions are basically about are you with me or against me? But all this said, uh, in, in my opening speech last year, I was on it, the, the opening ceremony of the school is always in our theater uh, space. And I was standing on the stage, which doesn't happen very often to me because I'm not, I'm not an actor. And I was standing there talking to the people and suddenly I said, listen, we are in an institution of 155 years. And this year, the very first time in our history, we, uh, we accepted and start teaching people who were born in the 21st century. And I think we still cannot uh, fathom whatever that means, that our students are people who were born in the 21st century. So what I mean is we cannot predict how these young people will change the face of the universe. Yeah, but I'm sure it's a formative experience to be part of really thinking through essentially what is it, what we want and what do we don't want. And we're coming closer to the end. Give us a little bit maybe um, an idea what Hungarian theater directors, uh, filmmakers, poets, novelists, who should we listen to? What should we read? Do you have some names for us um, um, in that time of Corona or music uh, or composers? Uh, what is coming out of Hungary? where you think, please pay attention. Well, right now, New York Times was writing about a, a film of a student of Lili Horvat, who is a student of this university, who was uh, at the Toronto Film Festival and New York Times yesterday put him in the 10 best films of that festival. So I think a, a lot of things are happening. Theater is of course half dead now in Hungary, but uh, and film, Film industry is a bit uh, in the frigid air, you know, they, they plan things, but they don't actually start to shoot them. Enyedi Ildiko just finished uh, uh, an adaptation of a very big Hungarian novel, which will come out as soon as possible. So- um, you know, sorry, sir, sorry, you may not remember her name, but she is the, uh, the director of On Body and Soul. Ildiko Enyedi, the person Andras just mentioned. Sorry, go on. Yeah. My 20th century and body and so she's inter internationally very very renowned so uh, I mean uh, I don't think the theater productions will go around but I mean some wonderful novels were published this year in Hungary which are translated into many languages so so uh, uh, and, and again music that travels easily and and the great composer Peter Rotvesh he produces a new opera basically every year, and most of them are uh, performed in European cities as well as in New York. So I, I suppose if you if you have never heard Peter Rotvers, you should uh, keep keep your ears open for him. Mm -hmm. And you know uh, the easiest way. To, to learn about uh, Hungarian culture is just jump on a plane and come. <laughs> Good. That's it for yourselves. Good, yeah. Uh, so I really do also encourage people to go to Hungary. It's a significant country. It's a beautiful country, I think, if I'm right. A bit also modeled after Paris as a, as a, as a, as a city and a great Eiffel, actually, I think, made the, the market. It's a great place. It's also a great place to see uh, a theater and uh, art and and museums, and it's important that there's also an international presence um, in that country. So uh, Andres and Lasse, really thank you for, um, for, for joining us. This was an important update. We needed to hear from you. And, um, and uh, we, our thoughts are with us, our hearts are with us. This is an important uh, struggle. It stands for much, much more than just the, your school. And, um, and that's why we all have to pay attention um, 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 to it. I hope you also will come. Les, I hope we will meet again. We had great conversations when we met. So I hope you both will come to New York. I will be back uh, in Budapest. Um, follow our Siegel Talks, where it's also about, you know, what do we do? What has already changed? What will change? 
what is significant and how does the political really matter? And in your case, of course, it is so openly um, um, visible um, and, um, and it's an, a significant uh, a development where we really have to pay attention and do everything that such things do not happen. We have to support the arts. We have to support the great institutions that create education, especially if it's working well, like in your school, if it's a success story, um, everybody would be thrilled to have three Oscar nominations in a row. Nobody would shut you down and say it has to be privatized. Uh, it's uh, shocking. So thank you all. And, uh, uh, and uh, you are a great representatives of, a, of a Europe, you know, we uh, all admire and uh, we um, look up to. So um, I hope that this also was uh, inspiring to you. I hope that you know that the international community um, is on your side and um, please um, do stay in touch, uh, stay safe also in the time of Corona. I am worried actually, even if Hannah said, no, it's not. Students getting together in tents and in times of Corona, it is putting their life at risk somewhere deep down. They also know that, um, mm -hmm. but they still think they have to do it like Black Lives Matter or demonstrations where people know they put their lives at risk when they go out on the street to chanting, but they say things are so hard, so difficult, so unjust, we have to do that. Tomorrow we hear from uh, Beirut, we have a uh, Sahar uh, Asaf back and Dima Mata, who I spoke to a week before actually uh, that big devastating explosion happened. We tried to contact them in between, but it was, wasn't possible. So we get an update and also see uh, what can we, we do. Um, uh, and also you guys let us know, you know, how the support could be done for you, what is helpful. And, um, and I hope you uh, will um, stay connected to us in one day come and hopefully soon we will see a Hungarian production, maybe at that festival that we are putting together the New York International Festival of the Arts in the summer of 2022. You know, think about it, uh, find partners. And so you can have some of the great uh, work uh, uh, represented. I remember too much photos production, you know, of Elektra, uh, which I saw and uh, Krekator, Andreas Tompa's work and so much brilliant work that came out of there. So, and it, it needs to be seen, it enriches our world. And uh, uh, like musicians listen to world music for their own music in the same as in theater. So thank you and a good night to Budapest. And thank you for your attention and your interest in our case. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, Andrew. Bye-bye. 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 Safe, safe. Thanks to HowlRound for hosting us, for uh, VJ and uh, Thea to make this uh, possible again, uh, to Andy Lerner here at the Seagulls and to you all listeners really taking time out of your day. There's also so much out there on content, but it is important and what happens there concerns us all. So really, thank you, thank you. We need great audiences as we do. We need great theaters and great films, but it's ultimately about the audience and uh, make sure that wherever you are, that such things won't happen. And uh, we all have to see it's a fight. It's a serious fight to keep what we have. All the best and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.